Good morning. Good morning. All right. Everybody smiling. Very good. We want everybody smiling because it is what the Lord's day. So happy Lord's day to everyone and all. So it's really wonderful and beautiful to be together and worship the Lord. Amen to that. Amen. 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 So last week, we we're talking about Amen, and we're going to continue our uh, part two of In Difficult Times, How to Handle Life, part two. So just a short recap, last week we talked about uh, the word Amen, and uh, we mentioned that uh, number one in uh, handling life, life's difficulties, you need to agree with God. Okay, you need to agree with God. Because if you are not in agreement with God, you are in uh, enmity with God. And then second is we need to move with God. And in moving with God, it is our faith in action. Okay, just like a uh, rocking horse. Though it's moving, it's not making any progress. And God's as, as matured Christians that we are, God wants us to be progressing, right? So now, uh, for the third part, or the second part, the next thing that uh, we'll be going to discuss after moving with God is you have to enjoy God. Enjoy your walk with God. All right, so enjoy your walk with God. Now, since you and I, we now agree with God, okay? our minds accept God and his word as true, we are now, okay, we are now moving with God, our faith in action, and as we are moving with God, going where God wants us to be, now comes the enjoying part. Okay? So enjoy your walk. Enjoy your moment with God. It is like marriage. Okay? When you get married, okay, when you become one, you are walking with your spouses. You are walking with your wife. You are walking with your husband. So as you move along, as you walk along with your wife and your husband, you must enjoy and savor that walk. Don't walk and don't move with your wife or with your husband looking like this. <laughs> you must enjoy. You must enjoy your moment with one another, just like with God. As you're walking along with God, as you journey with God, you must enjoy your life, your journey with God. In life's difficulties, enjoy the life you have with God. Now, I, I read this article, uh, Matthew Henry, a famous Bible scholar and a well-known uh, Bible commentarist, when uh, he was robbed, he said, I thank thee first because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my purse, they didn't take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it was not much. Fourth, let me be thankful because it was I who was robbed and not I who did the robbing. Now, what can we see in his attitude? It takes a real Christian maturity to have this level of reasoning. You know, we can sense uh, joy in Matthew Henry's uh, thankful heart. Not that uh, he was joyful because he loved being robbed. Of course not. You know, we are not thankful for that and we are not joyful with that. But joyful and thankful because in the unfortunate event, number one, he saw God. Okay? He saw God's hand protecting him. And number two, that God's provision abounded in him. That he did not have to resort to robbing people. That's why he said, I am thankful 
because it was I who was robbed and not I who did the robbing. Well, a person can have the same level of uh, reasoning if he was robbed with just a few dollars, you know. If you are robbed with just a few dollars, we can just shrug it off and, you know, shake it off and probably would say, well, it's just a few, a few dollars. I can easily earn it back. Now, here's the question. What if the amount taken from you was so substantial, was so significant, was so huge, a big amount? Can you say that now? Uh, that will be a different story, right? You cannot just shrug it off and say, oh, that's little. But it's not little, you see? But I believe that uh, Matthew Henry's uh, account, it is because of his big heart for the Lord and his Christian maturity. Now, you can see in, even in our despair, my dear brethren and friends, uh, in our trials, in our difficulties, the Lord's grace abounds. The Lord's grace abounds. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, part of the scripture reading. It says, my grace is sufficient. My grace is enough for you. For my power is perfected in weakness. Only a person who knows God intimately can have joy in heart walking with God under life's difficulties. You see, when, when you are truly aware of the truthfulness of God's word and when you know whom you believe, you can have real joy in whatever situations you are in life. Now, Jesus said, or James said, sorry, James said in James chapter 1, 2 and 3, Consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, why? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Now, number one, who was he talking to? Okay. In verse one, it says to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Basically, he was referring to the Jewish nation all over, scattered all over the nations. Now, James, he was encouraging them in the face of trials, in the face of difficulties of many kinds. Now, James said they must consider it pure joy. Now, what James uh, talking about to be joyful when they are in suffering, what was James talking about? Now, let's see in verse 3. And we can find uh, the answer. Okay. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces what? Produces perseverance. Now, you can see the red markings. It says, because you know. Now, what do those words mean? Because you know. It means that the Jewish people they have known already the reason why to be joyful in trials and in difficulties. They have known it from time immemorial. They, 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 have, they have it in them already. They have known it already. Now the next, it says that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James, James was telling them that they already knew what happened in their ancestors from the moment they left Egypt? They have known the story. When they, their ancestors left Egypt, when they were facing trials, many of them, they let go of God, grumbled against God, and turned to idol worship. That's why James said, because you know. You already knew what happened. And for those who remained faithful, at the time, it produces in them perseverance. Some persevered, some did not. So those who did not persevere, they all suffer. That's why James said, you know. But those who find joy in God, they develop a trait called what? Perseverance. 
and they were rewarded for it. That's why this was an encouragement for all the people and likewise a reminder for them to consider it pure joy whenever they are faced with trials uh, and difficulties because they are developing perseverance because they find joy which means satisfaction in God. Okay. Now, in a similar manner, Paul wrote and said in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, <clears throat> but we also, <clears throat> excuse me, glory. In some other translations, we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Now, Paul is speaking to believers. Paul was telling the believers that they too can find reasons to joy, uh, reasons to rejoice in the, in the midst of their suffering because it produces what? Produces perseverance. Now the same with James. Okay? But what is perseverance? Why is it so important? Now perseverance, it says persistence in doing something. It is a continued effort despite difficulty. Despite delay in achieving success, you would just go on even if there's hindrance. You will just go on, go on even if it hurts you because you know that you will be, that you have a goal in front of you, that you have a goal ahead of you, that you will be successful if you will not give up. Even though the success or reaching that goal would be delayed even though it would be difficult you will just go on and that is what's meant by perseverance okay despite of what's going on in our lives we just keep on moving just like the energizer bunny keeps moving 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 okay and what keeps us going what keeps us going joy joy you enjoy what you are doing if it is even difficult, even when it hurts. Okay? You know the term enjoying the pain? If you're going to, to study the word enjoying the pain, how can you enjoy the pain? <laughs> enjoying the pain. Well, uh, I, I, I'm playing the guitar and brother uh, Kennedy is also playing the guitar. And some of you are playing the guitar here. You will know that at first, when you're starting to learn how to play guitar, it will hurt. Your fingers will hurt. I'm telling you, my brother is also playing the guitar. It will hurt. Even if you put just a slight pressure on those uh, fingers, it will hurt. But we keep on doing it. Even the athletes, even though it hurts them, even though it pains them, they just continue practicing, practicing, practicing. Why? Why? Because they love what they're doing. Because they enjoy what they are doing. Because they know that ahead of them, there is a goal that they want to achieve. Enjoying the pain. All right? Now, we keep on going even if it hurts. Now, in that joy, even though it hurts, there is what we call love. There is love. You love what you are doing. You enjoy it because you loved it. You love it. Now listen, we enjoy God even though life is hurting us because what? We love God. Do you love God? Amen. Amen. Even if it hurts, I love God. The, the song that we have, where could I go? Where could you go? Even if it hurts, I will continue to love God. Even if it hurts, I will continue to worship and praise God. Why? Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen? Where could you go but to the Lord? Okay. And therefore, because we love God, even though it hurts, we persevere. Notice that we persevere because there is a goal. There is a goal. A success that is waiting for you and I at the end. All right? And what is the goal? What is the goal? What does success look like? 
Now we go again to Romans chapter 5. Perseverance. It produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Why? Because God has poured out His love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom He has given you. Okay? Our perseverance will eventually lead us to hope. A kind of hope that is not disappointing because God already poured out His love to us through His Son, Jesus Christ, by giving His Son, Jesus, dying on the cross so that you and I will enter heaven, will have eternal life someday. And that is the goal. And that is the goal. The goal of our perseverance is heaven. Okay? That is the goal, to be with God someday. And heaven is what success looks like in the future for all of us. Okay? So we are achieving this because we enjoy our walk, our journey with God, no matter what, even in life's difficulties. Now, there are many times in our difficult circumstances, brethren and friends, when God is using those difficulties in your life in the furtherance of the gospel. Okay? And for that reason, we rejoice because even though we are hurting, God is using you to advance the gospel. When most people see something unpleasant in their life, you see, God sees opportunities. Okay? God sees opportunities and makes something beautiful out of it. Okay? For that, we rejoice because God uses our imperfections to bring others to per uh, to perfections. Imperfections means our hurts, our challenges, our trials, our difficulties, our tears, so that He could bring others to perfection, meaning to be drawn to Him, so that they too can have the type of salvation that you have, so they too can have that hope that you have. So that's why God, even though you are hurting, God is using you. God is using that imperfections to draw those people to be perfect just like you. To be holy just like you. Okay? So be thankful and be <clears throat> re rejoicing. Okay? Now, when we have a real relationship with God, though you are weak, you are actually at your strongest point. Remember that. That is why, for the sake of Christ, I delight in weakness. Now, you can see why Paul is delighting in his weakness. Why? Because for the sake of Christ, because the gospel is being advanced because of his life. Even in insult, in hardship, in persecutions, in difficulties, for I am weak, then I am strong. Now, can you tell yourself, when I am weak, I am strong. Because of Christ. Because of Christ. Now, just like Apostle Paul, he was joyful even though he was in prison. You know, one time I mentioned about his, his uh, situation in that prison while he was in prison in Rome. It was not good. Okay? When he was in prison, he was suffering because of the gospel. He was suffering because of Christ. But because he was in prison, God used him. God used his situation. God used his imperfections to advance the gospel. Now, his chains, his chains were meant to restrict him. That's why he was in prison, so that he would not speak anymore about the gospel. Okay, so he would not advance the gospel. That's what his chain meant for. It is to keep him from speaking of the gospel. Okay? But the chains actually gave him freedom. Now, Brother Mike, what are they talking about freedom when he, is in, he was in chain? His chain gave him freedom. Freedom for what? Freedom so that the gospel can access inside the very heart of Rome. 
Now I will show you later on that even in the household of Caesar, the gospel went into their homes and even the palace guards. They have listened. They were taught by Apostle Paul. They thought that Paul was in prison. No, they are wrong. They are the ones in prison with Paul. When Paul was singing, when Paul was preaching daily and nightly, and the palace guards took turns in guarding him. Now, who is in prison? Is it Paul or the Romans? It, is, it was the Romans. You see, because of the life situation of Paul, even though he, he, he is suffering inside that prison, he was rejoicing because the gospel is being advanced. See? Now, in Philippians chapter 1, now I want you to know that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Now, can we say that even in our suffering? You know, even though I am in the hospital, I am now in the hospital suffering, it is for the advancement of the gospel. Can we see that in our lives? Or are we just seeing superficial, superficially? But Paul said that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. See? Now, in Philippians chapter 4, greet all God's people in Christ. This I love. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Amen to that. Because of Paul's imprisonment. You see, the household of Caesar could have, not, could have not heard the gospel if Paul was in prison. But it was God's leading because Paul agreed with God, because Paul was moving with God, was walking with God. He was enjoying his walk with God. The gospel was preached and went even inside the Caesar's household. And many became believers because of that. Now remember the word, delight yourself in the Lord. In, uh, in, in Psalm 37 verse 4. Okay, delight yourself in the Lord. Okay, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know, again, the meaning of the word desire. Or delight, sorry, delight. It means to be soft, to be pliable. You see, in our most trying time, when we are so down and out, when we hit rock bottom, God wants us to go to Him and work something beautiful in us. God wants you to be soft, to be pliable, so that He can mold you in whatever ways He wants, so that because He, in your imperfections, wants something beautiful done out of it. You are not seeing it now, but at the end, that's like Apostle Paul. He saw the purpose of his imprisonment. You see, you can see your life's purpose when you delight yourself in God. When you let God mold you. When you let God make you out of things that he wants you to be. And soon you will find out, oh, this is the plan of God to me. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. See? Now, God would do something beautiful, something majestic in your life. I believe that. I believe that. See? Now, let God steer away our lives and do as he pleases. That's what delight yourself in the Lord means. The next one, as you enjoy your walk with God, you nestle with God. Nestle means to settle Comfortably and snugly in a cozy place, creating a feeling of warmth and security. To snuggle, to cuddle, to huddle. Now our father, uh, he, he used to raise chickens in our backyard. We have the native ones and we have the hybrid, the white leghorn. Okay, the white leghorn. And when I talk about the word nestle, our chickens, the hens, comes to mind. Because I remember seeing the hen... Uh, would dig, scratch, and uh, make a small hole. And there he would 
uh, lay his, uh, her eggs and then eventually would incubate the eggs and the eggs would hatch and the chicks would be also under the hen. So they are nestled okay, under the hen and they are secured. They are comfortable there and they are secured because their mother, the hen, would protect them. Okay? So that's what nestle means. Okay? And this is what God wants all of us to have, to have rest in him, to snuggle right under his wings and feel safe and secure. He wants all of us to find true comfort in him. You see, in life's difficulties, it is paramount, paramount to nestle with God because he is our place of comfort, our refuge. So nestling with God is both a privilege and a blessing. Now, a privilege because his rest, okay, uh, his rest is given to all, but only a few can grab it. Only a few are taking that privilege, that opportunity. Now, a blessing because there won't be any pain, any sorrow, any tears in heaven. Okay. Now, in Hebrews chapter 4, it tells us that. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. So there are people who did not receive and who did not profit the word. They receive it, but they didn't move with God. They receive it, did not agree with God. So it's not a privilege for them. Opportunity lost. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. So that's why God wants you to nestle with him, to rest with him. So it's both a privilege and a blessing. You are enjoying God because you find comfort. You find solace in him. You know, you just throw your life at him, fully trusting him in what everything, and that everything will be well. We nestle with God because God is what? We nestle with God because God is enough for all of us. I keep telling myself, God is enough for me. God is enough for me. See? Now, can you tell that to yourself? God is enough for me. See? And His Word will stand true. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 again. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. God's grace is sufficient for me. Philippians 4, 19. And my God will supply every, wow, every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Whatever you need. Whatever you need, brother, sister. Whatever you need, God will provide it. God will give it to you. You just have to agree with God. In your agreement, you just have to move with God. And as you move along with God, you just have to enjoy your walk with God. And all that you need will be given to you. Go ahead and read Matthew chapter 6 and you will find the truth in those words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, not only that, not only that, nestle with God means that you will find security in him. Not only that he will give everything that you need, but you will find security in him. Now listen to what the Bible said. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. You need only to be quiet. He will fight for you. Whatever your battle is right now, the Lord is with you and he will fight for you. Deuteronomy 1, 30. The Lord your God who goes before you will fight for you. Just as you saw him do for you in Egypt. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you. So you see God goes before you. And now God is going with you. So God is before you. He is right beside you. <coughs> and he is with you. And he is right at your back. The Lord sheltered you. Is sheltering you. The Lord is protecting you. And to fight for you against your enemies. To save you. 
If God is with us, who can be against us? If God is with you, who can be against you? If you have God, do you need anything else? No. God is enough for me because I'm nestling with God. I nestle with God. I am resting with God. What else do you need? What else do you need? The power of prayer. Last night, by chance, I, I got a chance to, do you know Frank DiCaprio? Uh, he's from Rhode Island. I forgot the, the title of the show. Uh, he's, he's, he's a judge. Um, and then um, he, he's, he's famous. Then he got cancer. Uh, last night, I, by chance, I saw in the YouTube, he was asking everybody. He said, can I, can I make just a little request? Can you just pray for me? Just a little. Even a little will go a long way. Even a little. Because he said, because I believe in the power of prayer. That the Lord God would guide my doctors, the medicines, the technology, you know, to, to heal him. You see, but he needed prayers because he knows the power of prayers. And that's what he needed. He wants God. He needs God. And when you have God, what else do you need? What else do you need? God is enough. When, when you have God, all that all there is, you know, becomes secondary, tertiary, because you have the primary need that you have, that you need, and that is God. Now, brethren and friends, ultimately, all God ever wanted for us is to have a, a, a life full of happiness. And that will be in heaven. Of course, here, again, as we agree with God, we have mentioned that life can be, that life will be difficult. Okay. Now, take rest. Nestle with God. When life throws a curveball at you, okay, we can handle life's difficulties. Just remember the word, amen. I want you to remember the word, amen. Agree with God. Move with God. Enjoy with God and nestle with God. Amen? Amen. 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 Finally, I will leave us all with these words. If I don't agree with God, then I am in enmity with God. If I don't move with God, then I am nowhere near getting to heaven. If I don't enjoy God, then I found pleasure in Satan's work. If I don't nestle with God, then I am prepared to take my resting place in hell. Brethren and friends, for those who have not yet accepted the Lord, and if we have family and friends, that we know that have not accepted the Lord, please share Jesus. Share your story why you accepted Jesus Christ. Tell them why you are part of the kingdom. And for those that have not yet accepted the Lord, we want to give this invitation out there to all of you. Come forward and accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart when the apostles said repent and be baptized for the remissions of your sins. Shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation. God bless all of us.